This is episode number 39 of my Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox. Let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. This is episode number 39 of my Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox. Today we're going to be working with the abstraction filter. I haven't done too many uh videos about the abstraction filter. I've done a few, but today I thought we'd really dig into it a little bit. This is not going to be hard, but we're going to be using some layer masking inside of Topaz Studio 2. I'm going to show you some tricks and tips how to uh, get this type of an image. Now we start out with this image right here. Today I was thinking Venice for some reason, and I found this stock image, which I will uh, link it in the uh, description below this video, so you can go ahead and download it, and you can follow along with me. It's a great way of learning. Now, my previous edit is on is inside of this group right here, okay? So I'm going to leave this group shut off. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my background layer. That's Command or Control J to duplicate it. I'm just going to rename it uh, TS2 for Topaz Studio 2. It's just a really good idea to name things, okay? Now, when you're working with Topaz Studio 2, uh, you definitely want to duplicate your background layer because you don't want to work on your actual pixel layer. So let's come up here to Filter, and we'll go ahead and launch Topaz Studio 2, and we will get started. And now we're in the Topaz Studio 2 interface, and I love this interface. It's really nice. It's really laid out well, and I hope that uh, Topaz will do a... Uh, future updates on Topaz Studio 2 because I love this piece of software. You can do so much here when you're talking about digital art. And if you've watched any of my past videos, you know how fun this can be. So let's come up here to Add Filter and you're going to find the Abstraction Filter right here in the Stylistic section. So we're going to go ahead and click that. Now we're not going to do a whole lot in here. We're going to take the Simplify size and start to move it to, to the right. And when I do, watch how we start to lose detail in the image. But we're going to use some layer masking to pull a lot of detail back in. So I'm going to make it pretty uh, abstract here. I'm going to lose a good bit of detail out of it here. There's some things I don't like, like this light area back here. But I'm going to take care of that in Photoshop. And then there's some wires here. I'm going to get rid of that stuff in Photoshop. It's just easier to do it in Photoshop. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty good. I may have went a little too much here. I'm just going to pull back a little bit. But I'm not actually worried too much. Now, you know what? In second thought, I'm going to leave it up to around a 61 because we're going to use some layer masking to pull some detail back, especially on this uh, girl in the mask in the front here. And I might bring some detail, a little bit of detail back on this wall. Not all the detail, but just some of the detail. So let's go straight to layer masking, okay, and bring some detail back in certain areas here, okay? So let's go up to the layer mask up here in, in the abstraction layer. So click on this layer mask here. And you got this white mask, meaning that the, enti the entire effect is being shown through here. So we can click a brush here. Now, this is very important, and I think some people get confused with this transparency slider. Think of this transparency slider as a way of adjusting your adjustment brush. In other words, when it's black, and if I paint here, I'm going to reveal the entire amount of the underlying layer back in, okay? But if I take it to white and paint over here, revealing the abstraction filter, okay? So if I take this uh, slider and move it, and you can see it's a little bit gray right here. So let me go ahead and paint around there a little bit more. And that turns white, hopefully. Do I, yeah, I have it the whole way up, okay? But, and now, the reason why you saw some shown through there is because I have the softness turned up here and the edge wear is turned on as well. Edge wear is really cool technology. It'll hug edges and things like that. It may not come into big effect here, but it's it's going to be something that, that you want. And it's think of it as very intelligent um, layer masking where it's going to grab itself around edges and things, which is really, it's really a cool feature. And that's something unique to uh, Topaz. So we're going to leave the uh, softness up to about 50%. We're going to leave the edge wear turned on. And now this transparency slider, watch. I can take it and take it back like to like a like a gray color right here, okay? And I'm going to test here. And we, and we could go back and change things. And we have a radius here. We can make our brush larger or smaller here, okay? So what I'm going to do is paint around the eye area right in here. And so I can bring detail back. Now I can see her eye in here. Now remember, this is digital art, so I don't think I want to see her see her eye. So what I'll do is take this transparency slider and move it more to the right. That's around a 58%, and just paint over the eye area here. And I can still see some of it, so let's move it a little bit more. And I'm just painting in the center of the eye. 
And we can see a little bit of the eye there, and that's nice. It's kind of mysterious. So uh, now I'm going to take the slider and move it back. Now it's not going to alter anything here. It's just going to alter what the brush is going to be painting on now. And so I'm going to paint around the eye here in this area here. I'm going to stay off the center of the eye, okay? And look, I lost a lot of the detail in her nose, so I'm going to bring her nose detail back in and up in here as well. And look at these little jewels on her face. And look, her mouth. We lost her mouth. So look, we can bring some mouth in. There's some painting on her face. Let's bring some of that back in. Now remember, it's not bringing it in the full way. There's a jewel right here. So let me bring some of that jewel in. Now, if that's too much and there's too much detail here, watch. I'll just take this transparency slider and slide it to the right. And now I've taken some of that detail out, right? So let's, on the hat here, let's bring some of that detail back in. Isn't that cool? So we're going to bring some detail back in the foreground areas, which will really bring attention to our masked lady right here. And it's really cool. And then I'm going to work on her, um, I don't know, what do you call this area, this fringing area? Let's call it a fringing area. Forgive me for, <laughs> I'm not good at naming things, okay? We'll bring some of the detail. Now, I might have, I might have too much detail in here, so let's Let's pull this more to the right, and look, I, I want to take some of that detail away, even, even more than that, maybe like so, like right around in there. Yeah, I don't want to bring too much detail in. And then there's like something she's holding here. What is this? Does anybody know what this is? Is this like Aladdin's uh, lamp here? <laughs> Who knows, right? Here's some kind of a thing here. I don't know what this is, but let's just bring a little bit of detail in it, okay? Because remember, this is digital art. We're making a piece of digital art, and we don't want to bring all the detail in. Even on here, there's some sequins on here, some, some kind of a thing on here. You ladies know what this is. I don't. I'm bad with these things. Let's bring a little detail into her gloved hand here. Okay, and then on this area of whatever this lacy thing is, this frilly thing, we'll bring some of that detail in. But isn't that cool how we can just bring some detail in? And just break this thing up. And then we have this nice out of detail area back in here. So let's just work a little bit more in here. Okay. And now I'm going to make my brush larger. Okay. And then I'm going to bring some of this detail back on this wall right here. Because remember I said I'd like to bring some of that detail back in. Just a little bit there. Because she's in the foreground here. And I want to push this background back. So we would naturally have a little more detail in the front. Now I'll even paint on the front here of her uh, outfit. And I'm still, I have very, it's very light, so I'm not gonna let a whole lot of that detail through. But I'll let a little through. And I think that looks good. I'm kind of happy with it. I'm gonna make my brush a little smaller and maybe a lot smaller. And I think I'm letting too much detail through here, so I'm gonna cut some of the detail back. But you can go ahead, remember this slider here, you can change it to all kind of different shades of gray. And when it's lighter, you're letting more of the abstraction filter show through. And if you make it darker, you're letting more of the original air show through. It's just really that easy here. And maybe on our mouth here, I might want a little bit more of that mouth to show through. So let me make this a little bit smaller. And more than that. Okay, Dave. Maybe somewhere right around here. Helps to talk to yourself. I don't know if you like to talk to yourself, but sometimes I find that talking to yourself really can help you. Okay, and I think it's pretty good. Maybe I'll just bring a little more detail into certain parts of this thing. Not everything, just maybe right here. Just a little bit of extra detail, okay? I don't want too much detail to show through, but I like it on that point right there. And this little sequin right here, I think I'll take some of that detail away and make my brush a little bit smaller and just paint over here. Isn't that cool? We want it to be art. I'm really happy with it. Um... Oh, I'm not done yet because I got to paint some of her hat in. Whoops, give myself a bigger brush. Give yourself a bigger brush, Dave. Look, there's a rose up in here. Let's paint some of this detail back in on this hat up in here. Okay? And don't be afraid if you don't get it right because if you say, man, there's too much detail, I really screwed up. No, you didn't. All you have to do is take this transparency slider, slide it more to the right, and you'll get it. And this will really help you to understand how layer masking works here. Look, there's a jewel right here, and I want some of that jewel to show through. And I might want a little more to show through, so watch. I'll take this transparency slider, move it more to the left, and just paint over that jewel, just like so, and bring more of that through. And I think you're getting the idea. I'm not going to spend too much time here because the video will get too long. Because There's one other thing I want to do here in Topaz Studio, too. What I want to do is add another filter 
But before I add the filter, check my mask out there. Doesn't that look cool? Hey, there's a piece of art right there in that mask. Wow, a black and white, ethereal, ghosty looking image. Kind of fun. Let's go to add filter. Let's go to precision contrast. Now, I love precision contrast. I feel I could use a little bit more contrast, pop a little contrast. And, and when you add contrast, you're also going to bump up uh, saturation as well. I'm not going to mess with micro because I've taken most of the detail out of this image. So I'm going to work with low contrast, start to move it to the right and see that, see that contrast coming up there. And I'm also bringing up some saturation when I do that. Now I'll go to the medium areas of contrast and I'll bring a little bit of that up. Not too much. You can go crazy here and it'll look not nice. See, I can lose like detail under a hat right here if I go too much. So you got to be careful. Just be, you know, be studying what you're doing here and just don't, you know, willy nilly just move these sliders and really watch what you're doing. Now, this high slider can really get out of control fast. So if I start to move this to the right, watch, I can make things go really ugly, really fast. But you may say, well, you know what? That's the mood I'm in today. I want that look. And if you want that look, that's cool. But let me do this. Let me come back to zero, which is where it defaults at. And let me just move this uh, highlights, not highlight, the high amounts of contrast area to the left. And it'll take some contrast out of those areas, okay? So it'll just soften up like some of the lighter areas. In other words, if I move that, watch her face when I move this to the right. The whites will get very light. You see that? So I'm just taking some of the contrast away from the higher areas of contrast. I'm not going to go too much here, but it's just going to tame back the higher areas of contrast. And I think that looks good, but inside of this precision contrast is also, um, well, you have this equalization here. And usually what I like to do with this is, here's medium where it defaults, try low, watch the image when I click on low. You can see a little change there, here's medium and here's high. I think I'm gonna leave it on medium. And what I'll do is take the uh, vibrant slider and start to move it to the right, and it's gonna bring weaker color up. See, so I'm gonna add some more color or saturation to the colors, I should say. I don't want to go too crazy here, so I'm going to add a little bit of that. This color contrast is nice because uh, it'll bring up some of the weaker areas that got lost in the contrast adjustment of colors. So I'm going to start to move this up. Can you see, like, look at these jewels starting to pop through and up on, on her uh, hat here. Is that what you call this, a hat? And look how these jewels pop out here. And I'm still maintaining a very artistic look. Now, that's probably too much. Now, I could also try taking this vibrance back a little bit. Yeah, I liked it where it was. I'm going to take the color contrast back a little bit. I want to keep some of that in here because I love the way these jewels are getting colored up in here. It's looking kind of nice. And even the colors back here are pretty cool. That still might be too much. I'm going to bring it back. Okay, maybe somewhere right around there. I like how the jewels are looking very nice. Now let's click this eye off in the precision contrast. So here's the before and here's the after. So before and after. So I think it's moving in a nice direction. Now if I feel I'm getting too much detail back in this area here, I can come back to the abstraction filter. Uh, let's go back to the layer mask and let's go back to the brush. Let's go to the transparency and move it more into the lighter areas of things and make my brush a little bit smaller and take your time. You know, I would take even more time here and, and uh, let's see here. I'm on the abstraction filter. I'm gonna move this more to light, make it even lighter. So what I'm gonna do is take some of that detail out in there. I feel a little too much detail got put back in there. Now I may have taken too much out, but take your time and just work with it. You see that? That looks good. Because when I brought up that contrast, it also pulls up some detail as well. It kind of, you know, it's just, uh, you know, something that happens when you add contrast. But what do you think? Now, here's the overall before and here's the after. And I think you get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. And I'm thinking things are looking pretty good. So I think I'm done here in Topaz Studio too. We have a few more things to do in Photoshop and we'll be done. Now, all I need to do is come up here to accept, click accept, and that'll send us right back into Photoshop. And here we are. Here is our before and here is our after. And now I just want to do a bit of cleanup work here. So let me go ahead and get myself a blank pixel layer. Okay. Let me get myself a clone stamp tool and you can just type S for a shortcut. That's really easy and fast. And I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. That's too big. I'm going to... uh sample an area like here. So I want to get rid of this area here. It's distracting me. So I'm going to sample this area. 
click right here and sample and you'll notice I have all layers selected here so it'll sample that and I like to paint on a blank pixel layer it just to me it makes more sense and I could sample from different areas of the image break it up a little bit I'll get rid of some of this stuff in here maybe that little line there getting rid of some of this and you just have to make it look look believable and just going around to different areas is just sampling different areas and it helps it to make more sense it's more random okay so look that's gone that's taken care of and now this uh lot these i don't know what this is some kind of a wire or something i'm going to get rid of that so i'm going to use a different tool i'm going to use a uh spot healing tool and i'm gonna, i'm just going to use a shortcut j for that and you can adjust your brush size larger or smaller here and I'm just going to simply, and I, notice I have sample all layers checked here as well. So I'm just going to simply go like this. And this is so easy in Photoshop to do. It's, it's fixed. It's gone, right? And let me even see this area right here, if I can fix that area. Nah, I don't like that. Yeah, that looks okay. I'm just, sometimes I find if you just keep moving this thing a little bit, you can... This spot healing tool kind of works with you as you just keep working. And that looks good, right? I just played with it till I got it. This little line right here I don't like. And here's a little line I don't like. And I can just go here and go here and find little things I don't like and fix them. But check that out. Now, here it is without this layer 3, which is my correction layer for fixing like weird stuff in the image. Here's before and here's after. So what do you think? I think it looks really good. If you're happy with your overall image, you can go ahead and save it out as a PSD file or as a TIFF file with layers, or you can flatten it and you can come up here to file and uh, you can uh, export it as a JPEG or whatever you want to do. Again, save it as a TIFF or a PSD with layers intact in case you want to come back later and do some other things to it. And that's basically it. The masked woman from venice well there it is i put this in a uh, digital mat uh, i used topaz studio 2 to do that and the reason i did that just to see what it would look like what if we wanted to sell this at an art fair somewhere we would want to mat it and put it in one of those clear plastic bags and put it on display give this one a try download the uh, image so you can try it out for yourself and follow along with this tutorial I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.